welcome back to Becca Harkins Art. I'm Becca and today I'm going to be walking you through the process of creating a split composition Dutch pour. When I made this painting, I made a few mistakes and I thought it would be valuable for me to go through and point out those mistakes and then kind of show you what I did to remedy them so you can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> um, the first mistake that I made here is that I mixed too much black into the bottom base paint. It was supposed to be navy blue, but as you can see here, it looks more like black, and when you can see when it dries, it is very, very black. Not really a problem per se, but not exactly what I was going for. So after I laid that down, I came in with my golden turquoise which I just love this color. I use it all the time. And I have been trying to figure out how to use it as a base um, for a split composition or just a full base. And you know, it has proven to be more difficult than I imagined it would be. Um, but I'm gonna walk you through the process here so you can see how I use it and you can see the results. The golden paints are much, much thinner than the Liquitex paints, so I do find it a challenge to get the consistency right. But the color is so pretty, it is worth continuing to explore. So anyway, I'm just moving the paints around with my blow dryer to evenly coat the bottom of the canvas, and once that's finished, I'll be ready to come in with my pour colors. After I blow out the top of the canvas, I like to run my fingers along the edges just to make sure they're covered. And you can see that that turquoise is so transparent that on the edges of that canvas, you can actually see the canvas poking through and that drives me bonkers. <laughs> Anyhow, I had some white um, paint laying around from a previous pour and I put that down in the bottom because I really, really wanted the colors to stand out. And I find that using transparent bases and um, dark bases, it, it, it can be a challenge to get the colors to stand out. So as I'm laying down my pour colors, I've got white, mauve, gold, and silver. You can start to see where mistake number two is coming in. Do you see real close in here where the turquoise and the white are really bleeding together? That is because the white is too thick in comparison to the turquoise and it's bleeding right into it. You will see at the end, if you wait to see the dried result, why that becomes an issue. Um, but I'm just moving right along here. I am blowing my colors out and very, very happy with how this looks. I've got some beautiful lacing. Bring you in for a slow-mo here so you can really enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy watching it over and over and over again. Um, look at that beautiful white lacing over the turquoise and then bringing it back in the other direction, um, you can see where the white is giving me some pushback and moving. Um, and like I said earlier, that is because it's probably a little bit too thick. Um, but it does provide some really, really nice contrast against those dark colors. And I'm very happy I used it. I just wish I had checked it first to make sure it was thin enough because the paints were just too thick. Okay, so I'm examining this piece and I really, really like the way it turns out, but I do wish that there was some more white down here or some lighter colors. So I decided to go in and add a little bit of silver and a little bit of white to the bottom um, just to bring that out with some more contrast against that black that is supposed to be navy blue. <laughs> So it doesn't take a whole lot when you're dealing with um, totally opaque colors such as metallics and titanium white. Um, so I just put a little bit in there and then I, I blew it over because I wanted to start some um, cell reaction before I blew it out and then I blew it down towards the bottom and voila, magic. I love it. I love the balance. I feel like it pulls the whole thing together and really gives it that very, very stark, uh, narrow center to a burst of color on the outside, which is exactly what I was going for. At this point, I'm just looking at it, um, looking at all the cells come up, giving it some time to react. 
if you sit there and look at your painting for a little while, you will see that it does slowly develop and you'll see cells pop up, you'll see the colors change, you'll see them grow. Um, the lacing there was so nice and white and then on this side we've got some lacing and black. And I think that's just really cool that we've got like two different colors of lacing going on in this painting. And then I decided I wanted that center area to be a little bit more narrow and oops, I took it too far and I blew that turquoise paint right over the entire thing. I have got to learn to just leave well enough alone when I like it. I have a tendency to fiddle too much and then I make mistakes. <laughs> but the nice thing about fluid art is that mistakes are almost always able to be remedied if you're creative. <laughs> Drop me a comment below if you can relate to that. Anyhow, um, it really, really has some nice lacing. The silver and the gold do not combine the same way that the gold and the copper do as far as creating those gradient cells, but um, it still is very pretty and this painting really does have a unique look of its own. Um, there are some really, really nice cell structures in there and I am excited with how it turned out. Okay, bringing you in for a close up here. Um, you can see there's some really, really nice lacing here. I hope that that sticks and doesn't get swallowed up by the turquoise. This section up here is really neat. It reminds me of some kind of like aerial view of Hawaii or something. Um, this is where the silver and the gold mix together Looks like I've got some bubbles that need to be popped there. Um, really nice cell structure down here. I'm really glad I added the white because I think the white down here really balances out. The white at the top um, got some really nice cells over here too. The white and the turquoise blended really, really pretty. I love the, the flow as we go down here. I love this flow of the white over the, <laughs> supposed to be navy, but I think it actually looks black. Um, sorry about the glare there. There's some really interesting cell structure in here. Very happy with that. And then again, up through this section, we've got the gold, we've got mixing, the silver mixing a little bit with the turquoise. And I love the way the gold and the turquoise mix together. Right next to, um, some really intricate, really moody lacing. Because the sides of this painting are amazing. Do you see that those cells and the really interesting colors in the side there, and you know, even down there? Um, it's it's really pretty. So why are you not focusing? There we go. Now you're focusing. Um, I do find with the transparent colors, sometimes we get some show through on the edges there. So I will have to come back and touch that up when it's done. Um, but there you have it. I'm excited. This piece is very, very moody. Probably matches my mood today. <laughs> okay, and here is the dried painting. I really do like the way that this turned out. It has a lot of mood and a lot of passion to it. Um, and I wanted to share some key takeaways with you. The first is that that part where I blew over the turquoise where I wish I hadn't done that, um, I did manage to fix that sort of with a finger swipe. I believe that much like sushi, a finger swipe can fix just about anything when it comes to acrylic pore painting. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the base colors. As you can see, what was supposed to be navy blue dried black, very, very black. And the turquoise actually dried kind of uneven. When I first saw the dried results, I was really disappointed. But I have to say, this painting is really, really growing on me. I have tried to use the golden turquoise as a base several times and it has never turned out the way I wanted it to. But I feel like maybe, like maybe I have actually stumbled upon something that I love here. It kind of looks like a bay in the one area where it dips in with maybe some sandbars or some coral reefs. It really has that aerial ocean view look that I have come to love. 
I did lose my two favorite areas of lacing right here and right here and I have to say that that is because my white paint was too thick in comparison to my turquoise paints and over time the turquoise just rose to the top and the white sunk and I lost that pretty lacing. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember to like and subscribe and I will see you for the next one.